Hi everyone, welcome to today's TechNet video looking at animatics. So we're going to have a look at what they are and how you actually build one yourself. So an animatic is an animated storyboard. All that means is it's a storyboard with some animations added in which you add through a combination of Photoshop and a little bit of Premiere Pro or After Effects depending how nice you want to be. First of all, you need to start off with an actual storyboard that you've drawn. Of course, you can make this on the computer if you prefer, but it is a little bit easier if you draw it because then you can scan it in using our scanners at the college and then get it into Photoshop. That's pretty much your job. As you can see here, here is our lovely technician Steve showing you how to do the process. First of all, you start with your storyboard. You don't need to be a Picasso, you don't need to be a Rembrandt, you just need to be able to draw something that looks, you know, relatively like what your frame is going to be. From there, you'll need to use one of the scanners in college to actually get your storyboard into the computer system. Obviously, please use it in the correct way, uh, and then you'll be able to actually get your storyboard onto the computer in either a JPEG or a PDF format. Either or, it doesn't matter. Photoshop will understand both. Once you've scanned your document in, you'll then need to open up Photoshop, which is where our computer comes in. So I'm going to become a little bit smaller in the corner. So once you've got your storyboard scanned in, all you need to do is simply import it into Photoshop. I'm just literally just going to drag and drop this in. So once you've imported your storyboard into Photoshop, what you need to do is you need to cut out each frame individually for you then to be able to edit and correct and change whatever you like to it. So what we're going to do first is we're going to click on File and New and we are going to make a brand new document. Now, the size we're gunning for is 720p in size. So if you click over here to the film and video section on the top right hand corner and then we're looking for this second one in on the top row called HDV HDTV 720p. So we're going to click on that one. Uh, if you want to give it a name I would suggest calling it frame one or similar uh, or something like shot one anything on that kind of ilk. Leave all the other settings as they are and just simply click create. So what this thing gives you is a big white rectangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out one frame and we're going to move it over to this document. So to simply cut out your frame, all you need to do is grab the select tool, second one down on the left hand side, and simply draw a box around which frame you want to steal. So I'm just going to steal this top one as frame number one like so. Obviously you get the lovely little ant lines around the outside, so what we're going to do on the keyboard is press Ctrl and C, click over to shot one and then do Ctrl and V to paste it over. Now as you can see it has now moved to this dock. What we need to do here is now make it bigger. So I'm just going to use the shortcut code of Ctrl and T for transform. Remember to hold the shift key on your keyboard while you do this and make this roughly the same size as your frame, much like so doesn't matter if you have the black line around the outside or if it's disappeared entirely, it doesn't massively matter. Once you've set the size, simply press the enter key on the keyboard like so and you'll notice everything has come back to life. From here, what you need to do is pick on your screen what you want to move in your animatic. So for this frame, I'm simply going to make this character move. So all we're going to do is we're going to draw a select box around him. Now, obviously you can use the quick select tool, you can use the lasso tool, you can use whichever tool you personally prefer. Honestly, it doesn't matter, it's whatever you use best. I'm just going to go for quick and easiness, I'm going to use the quick select tool. So we're just going to zoom, zoom this in like so, make my size a little bit smaller because my character is quite small. Doesn't matter that he's quite pixelated and we're just going to select the whole character like so. Now obviously if it does go a bit pear shaped and it does start selecting stuff it shouldn't, remember you can press and hold the alt key and you can unselect certain bits of the background. But obviously we want these little tiny bits so I might need to get a slightly smaller select tool just to get his cape in like so. What you now need to do is you need to press Control and X on your keyboard to cut them out. And what you will notice here is you might have left a little bit of shadow around the outside. That's absolutely fine because what we can do is on our layer here, we can simply erase it and get rid of it. So I'm simply just going to get a paintbrush, copy the colour that's in the background and then just paint out the gap. 
Now, depending obviously how complicated your image is, it might be quite easy to do this or it might be quite hard. It's up to you, but make sure it's a nice blank space. And then all we need to do is press Control, Shift and V to paste our character back in exactly where they were. What you'll notice now on the right hand side, we've got our background layer. We've got layer one, which is the background of the actual scene. And we've got layer two, which is our character. I would highly recommend renaming each of these layers to make life easier in Premiere Pro when we get there. So I'm gonna call this scene background and I'm gonna call this person one. So now we've got person one, which obviously we can show and hide like so. And we've also got our scene background, which is like that, like so. And this frame is now done. So all you need to do is do file, save as, and make sure you save it as a PSD document, incredibly important there. Make sure it is a PSD document. And I'm gonna chuck it in my CTEC level three folder. And I'm gonna call this shot one and click save. Obviously making sure it says PSD just there on the screen. Obviously it will come up with this, just click okay. And that is shot number one done. All you need to do now is repeat that for the next 10 to 15 frames. Some time later. So in true Blue Peter fashion, here is some I made earlier. As you can see here, we've got frame one all the way down to frame number 12. Obviously in the spec, it says do between 10 to 15 frames. That's obviously up to you how many frames you want to do. I've just done 12 because I had three rows of four. Made quite nice and easy sense. So now we've got this in here, what we need to do now is load up Premiere Pro. So now we've got Premiere Pro loaded up, all we need to do now is click on new project and you want to make a new project file to go along with it. So I'm going to find a folder I can put this in. Let's move that to there. Level three, make a folder called animatic. Obviously do make sure you label it with your name so we know whose it is. Otherwise everything will go pear shaped. So we're gonna select that folder there. Obviously scratch disks are all the same, lovely. And you want to give this a name, preferably with your name there, sweet. So once you've got Premiere Pro loaded, now what you want to do is import your PSD files. So simply all you do is load up your shots that we got from before, here is shot one, drag and drop it into Premiere Pro in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. What this will then give you is this will give you this little box here. This is incredibly important because what you need to do is click on merge all layers and select individual layers. If you don't do this, your animatic won't work. So click on individual layers, make sure all three layers are ticked and you want to simply click OK. What this will then do is add you a folder, which if we double click it, will show you each one of the three frames that we made earlier. So we've got our person, we've got our scene background and we've got the white background in the very back of the frame. So what we want to do now is make a sequence. So we go to file, new and sequence. We want to make a 720p file. Uh, obviously it doesn't matter that it says digital SLR, that is fine. And we're just gonna pick 24 just for argument's sake, because obviously we're in England after all. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our background layer, put that on video channel one, take scene background and put that on video channel two, and take our person and put them onto video channel three. So as you can see here, here is our storyboard shot. If I press spacebar to play it, as you can see, absolutely nothing happens. Fantastic. So what we want to do is we want to add some animation to our scene. This can be done really, really quickly and really, really easily in Premiere Pro just to do nice and easy, simple movements. However, if you want to do something a bit more advanced, of course, you can use Adobe After Effects as well. So just for this, here is person number one on their layer. Just going to make that a wee bit bigger so we can see it. And what we want to do is we want to go to effect controls on the top left hand corner of the screen and we want to play around with these motion the motion controls here for position and scale and maybe rotation too if you want. Now what this comes down to is keyframes. So what keyframes are is they tell Premiere Pro to move something to a certain point at a certain time. So what we're going to do is press the stopwatch right at the very beginning and we want to set our keyframes here. So what we're saying at this point in time this person on the screen is going to be there that size and that position on the screen. Now what we're going to do is move our blue play line to the end of the clip. So you can either move it in the actual timeline bit down here, or you can move it in this handy little box up here as well. So I'm going to move this right to the very end, just about there. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to want my character to be a lot bigger. So I'm just going to click and drag on scale. As you can see, my character scale has increased and I want to move him 
across the screen to the right. So I'm going to move this one across the screen to the right hand side here. Now let's move him down a little bit as well. So it looks like he's walking across these planes. So remember this one controls left and right, this one controls up and down, and this one controls your scale. What you will notice is on the right hand side it's added some keyframes for you. So whenever you move that blue play line and you fiddle around with those dials it will add a keyframe for you as long as you've pressed the stopwatch first. So what we're now going to do is rewind time and I'm simply going to press the space bar on the keyboard and as you can see our character now moves across the screen quite nice and slowly. Obviously this is up to you how long you want your frames to last for. By default when you plug them into Premiere Pro they will last for a whole five seconds however if you want them to run a little bit shorter or a little bit longer you can of course extend them out if we zoom into our screen here we can simply hover along the edge and just pull them out longer or crop them in shorter so what you do is hover your mouse on the end of the clip wait till it goes red and then you just click and drag to make it shorter or click and drag to make it that little bit longer and that is it pause sorry for the interruption just to let you know, you should also add some audio and some sound effects to your animatics as well. Make sure any music you use is copyright free, so don't need to worry about any legal issues. And also, if you want, you can use any of our audio library effects, which you can find in the media and film server. Make sure you're at it, otherwise you can't pass. Anyway, on with the video. Play. Now you just repeat that many many times with all your shots in a row uh, you pick what kind of movements you do as long as you import them all as an individual layer everything will be absolutely fine however if you want to play around with it a little bit more like i said you can feel free to chuck it into after effects now what you're probably going to ask is what does the final product look like so what you can do is we can load up the final example here with our little VLC media player, literally lasts about 30 seconds, and we can have a look at what the final output looks like. So obviously it is completely up to you how you make your storyboard work obviously what you're looking for is something in your animatic that will soon resemble what you're actually going to make with your final projects so hopefully that's giving you some idea of how to actually put an animatic together and how quick and how straightforward it can actually be of course if you need any more help feel free to find either myself will or steve in the edit suite we are more than happy to help you at any point in time Thanks for watching this TechNet video on our how you can actually make and put together an animatic for your projects. Feel free to give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter, F6 Media Film. We've got quite a few competitions going on at the moment, so feel free to get involved. Also, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel here on TechNet, where you can find all these kind of videos and more coming out very soon. Cheers.